make the best of it? How can we do it even better um, than our previous salvage operation? Um, so I will turn it over to Halden to talk about a few other points about online teaching. Okay, thank you, Jen. And before starting living on islands, when we were on the mainland, you can see on the left our perfect teachers teaching in their classes. And on the right, you can see the pictures of computer and representing fully online learning. So this is the question. What can you say? What's your answer to this question? Which one is better, face-to-face -face learning or fully online learning? If I ask the question, what's your response? Face to face, both face to face, face to face, a bit of both. Okay, thank you. But in fact, in fact, um, this is a rhetoric question, right? In fact, the answer is too obvious that it doesn't require a response. Why? Because fully online learning is conducted only when face to face instruction cannot be delivered. So, um, please. Uh, avoid making avoid making preferences, um, making comparisons to express your preference online or face to face, because we can't compare them. Because all, both of them have their different idiosyncratic characteristics, and fully online learning is only preferred when there is no chance of having face to face learning. Right. So if we have the chance of doing face to face, we do it face to face. If you can't do it, then we go fully online, okay? So um, the thing is that about the fully online learning is how can we humanize our lessons? So that's the golden rule of enriching our online lessons. How can we make it more humanized? So we will share some ideas with you. And Jen has an idea about sharing his, with her videos. Yeah, thank you, yes, Halton. Um, so what, oops, sorry, forgot to turn my mic back on. Um, thank you, Halton. Um, one of the suggestions that came out in a previous um, online sharing session was that maybe some students were reluctant to participate and fully engage because they didn't really know each other um, and they didn't know their teacher because we've we had combined a lot of the groups. Um, but now we're starting out with that situation. Um, so one thing that I've seen um, suggested and one thing that I'm going to try this module is introductory videos. So just short videos to introduce yourself um, and ask, you know, your students, see if maybe they um, would like to do videos and introduce themselves as well. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time like teaching you how to use tools, but I will um, show you some of the tools that I've explored and talk about some pros and cons. Um, the first one is uploading things into a Blackboard Wiki. Um, there are a lot of uses for Blackboard Wikis and Halden will talk about some other ones later on. Um, but I was able to upload a quick video um, and I will show you my video. I'm gonna have to share it, um, stop sharing this and go to um, a different Chrome tab. Here it is. All right, so here is my quick intro video. Oh, am I recording? Uh, hi everyone, welcome to module four. My name is Jen and I'm gonna be your instructor for this module. I wanted to record a quick video so that you could get to know me a little bit better. Hopefully you will also um, have a chance to record your own videos so that I can get to know you and so that you guys can get to know each other. Um, we're gonna be spending a lot of time together and I want you to feel comfortable sharing ideas and exchanging um, papers, maybe helping edit each other's papers as well. So a little bit about me, as you might be able to tell from my accent, I am American. Um, I was born and raised in Florida. I grew up actually very close to where SpaceX is currently doing its space program and launching rockets. Um, so that was kind of a cool place to grow up. Um, okay, we don't have to watch the whole video. Um, but I did want to give you a sense of that. Um, 
the mistake I made at the beginning was a genuine mistake. I honestly didn't realize I was recording. Um, and so one of the uh, suggestions I've heard is you don't have to be perfect, just be you. Um, I think that helps students feel a little bit more comfortable. Um, what didn't work for you, John? Um, but the, huh, okay. Were other people able to see the video? Yes. Okay. Sorry, John. Um, I can share it with you later if you're really interested, John, but believe me, it's nothing special. Um, I made mistakes. I fumbled over some words. Um, you know, and that's okay. Like, show students that you're human, that you're not this robot teacher, right? Um, so I uploaded that one onto Blackboard Wiki, which the advantage of Blackboard Wiki is that you're staying within the Blackboard environment, but it wasn't that easy to get from my phone to, um, if I were using my phone, um, to the Blackboard site. Um, this one I actually did on my computer, so it was a lot easier to upload. Um, I also explored Flipgrid a little bit, which is a lot more user friendly, um, but students would have to join the group and they would have to have a Google or Microsoft um, G, um, email account in order to record. So pluses and minuses for that one as well. Um, there is, this is the desktop um, version and there is a phone app as well. Um, EdConnect is another one. I only was able to figure out the um, phone, the app version. Um, this one students would have to join, um, but you can create new topics. Um, so maybe if you want to have a discussion topic where students post videos, you could do that as well. Um, but again, students have to join a separate um, app environment. Um, so one of the adages uh, saying that I've heard is the best tool is the tool that people use. <laughs> so you might have a really fancy camera with a really great zoom lens, but if it's so bulky that you don't take it with you, then maybe your phone camera is a better tool. So when we're thinking about our students, perhaps WhatsApp and WhatsApp groups are a better tool for these types of videos. So, you know, these are some of the tools. I'll leave it up to you guys to figure out what works best for you or your students. Um, WhatsApp does have the advantage as well of having a, a desktop um, version. So you can access that uh, through the internet um, to get um, a little bit more functionality in some ways. Um, but again, the, the idea is to make yourself accessible to students through an introductory video, for example. Um, and I will leave it up to you guys to decide um, if this is something you want to do and which tool might work best for you and your students. So I will hand it over to, I think Funda is next. And that's my turn, yes. Thank you, Jan. Hello, everybody. I miss you so much. I'm so excited again. And it's the first time we've done something like this. Um, as you all know, hello, guys, uh, about nine out of 10 students are out of school worldwide and experts in education emergencies share big insights on what educate educators can do and the one that the quote from Gavin Dudney is the best one I have ever seen and Adrian Underhill last weekend on Sunday he said uh, just be yourself let problems including tech stuff be part of the lesson that emerges he also said give up trying to be interesting reach out and connect. You will be twice as interesting. So we'll be sharing some ideas today, as Jen and Hayden said at the beginning. And uh, the first activity that I have chosen is here now. I hope everyone can see the photos. Okay. And the idea is now that we teach from home, and we should, I guess, make the most of it. And the idea here uh, is to share the we from my kitchen table. Students can share their photos as well, either on Padlet, just like here, or from their WhatsApp, WhatsApp groups. 
that's possible. So you see three photos here, and please tell me which one is my view from the kitchen. Is this number one, number two, or number three? <laughs> okay, okay. So, yeah, number three outweighs the others. Elif thinks number two, I wish. Number one, yes, some people said so. But yes, number three is my view from my kitchen. Okay, so what kind of things can we do with an activity like this? Nuket has the same view. Yes, definitely. Yes. So this one I created on Padlet. Students can share their view as well. It is possible, as I said before. This can be done through Padlet or WhatsApp, desktop. It is possible to do it. If you do it with uh, Padlet, then you need to send them the code for them to send their pictures. So I thought that students can tell the rest of the class what they can see and compare it with their view. Also, guess where you live. That's one of the ideas. Tell me if you like it. Send me an emoji. Would you like to do it one day? Yeah, I think uh, personalization and uh, the only tool uh, that we can socialize uh, is our lessons now. And I think it is priceless. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. So the next thing we are going to look at is something similar. Uh, again, I created this one on Padded. Okay. Because I think the cho choice of shoes tell, uh, tells a lot about uh, one's personality. You can have a look at uh, my shoes, my trainers, and you can tell me why I have picked these shoes because of the conditions that we are in now. Can you guess the reason why I picked this pair? Can you type in? <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. They are comfortable. They are not brand new. They are, they are really comfortable. And because I miss walking as much as I can. So I think I'm missing those days where I can put these trainers on and walk as much as I like. I think those days will come soon. Okay, now, okay, so Haydn, it's your turn, Haydn. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Funda. And as Jen and Funda also said, that humanizing and personalization is quite important. And we want to underscore the importance that we are also human and we are there for them and we share information about ourselves. So in Jen's case, Jen prepared a video and shared the video. Okay. Um, in Jen's case, Jen prepared a video and shared the video. Or um, you can prepare such a simple slide about yourself. And then this is what I prepared, for example. I prepared nine sentences and all of them are about myself. And one of them is a lie. And I show the sentences to my students, okay. Um, know about myself, this is my life, these are the things that I did, uh, but one of them is a lie, and they make a guess which one is a lie. So out of these, um, out of these nine sentences, would you please make a guess which one could be the lie? Two, two, eight, five, eight, Okay, let me cut to the chase. Thank you for your responses. Uh, I wish we could receive such responses from our learners as well in our lessons, right? And, and the, the lie is the last one. Okay, I, I danced um, in John. In fact, it was more than 2,000 people when I was at university or dancing group. And we danced Erzurum, USA with it. And all of them were correct, and 
the last one, I have Hakana in the martial art category. That was the lie. Uh, it was me in the picture on the left, uh, but I don't have Hakana yet. I need six more, six more months. Um, <laughs> yes, I had to stay in a police station, uh, Catherine, for a few hours. I was, uh, anyway, I don't want to talk about it. And let's, we can also prepare such a thing and then share information. And the students, you see that this, this no Max, no John, I wasn't drunk. And yeah. And um, you can see the aura of the classroom. I did this in my usual classes, and you can see the aura changes immediately. So the students look and their behavior, their manner also changes because you share your life with them and then you can ask them and okay, you can ask them. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm sure you are also familiar with this, the important numbers, and you can also share the important numbers with your friends. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, I Okay. Okay, so we can also share the numbers with our friends and they can also make guesses, but they can only ask yes, no questions why those numbers are important for us. Right? And another activity is that we can ask them to choose one, one adjective to describe their feelings. For example, how do you feel at the very beginning of the fourth module, will you please type one adjective describing your feelings in the chat box? So, so somehow it's happy and the nervous friends you come to the ocean. Curious. And these are the ideas the summary of what we have done. How can we humanize our lessons, icebreakers, and we can switch on our cam if the internet connection is good and we can ask students we can also ask students to turn their camera or microphone on we can use the discussion chat on blackboard and we can use different tools just like the name pickers polls and tablets to create a bond with the students are there any icebreakers you can suggest Any icebreakers? You can use your microphone and share your activity with the rest. Okay. And let's move on to the best practices. Then also talk about the wikis. 
Um, this is what I did in my class, last module, second half of the last module, friends, the GTs. And I was teaching um, writing, and GTs helped me a lot. How? Um, these are the topics, the assignments that I gave, for example, online shopping. They wrote about online shopping, talent of him, and in fact, that day, Nicole that day, okay? For example, um, that was a task, online shopping. And on the right, you can see the student's name. So, the student, Click on his or her name and write the activity. So, for example, this is what Arda wrote in the first half of Arda wrote. And in the second half, um, the one with the corrections. Right? And the students can see each other's essays as well. So, they can access lots of sample essays and the corrections. And it's not only the teacher who can make the correction, um, which is also good. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's also good for peer correction. How? Let me share one page. I'm glad that it helps many instructors. So, so this is, is um, one, one of the other page, page, wiki pages. For example, this is what Fibra wrote to uh, the paragraphs on homeschooling. And Larson, this is Larson's corrections on Fibra's paragraphs. So Larson clicks on Fibra's text and makes corrections. So we can also do peer corrections that way. I don't believe the students would have mercy of their peer corrections, of course. And then I also make my corrections. And as you see, Cubra, TV, Caracol, which one is called and which one is effect, you can also make comments in the effect as well. So which is good for peer correction and teach correction and accessing many different samples. And um, Kumara also wants to share her experience with Wiki as well. Now I'm leaving the floor to Kumara. Can you see the slide? Is it possible to show the slide? Of course it is. Thank you. Thank you. Um, like many of you, I mean, I really didn't know how to use Wikis before. And after watching Hayden's video, um, I had a go and then tried with my students. And the response uh, was quite positive. And the fact that uh, you can give feedback on the Wiki and on the essays to Wiki and students can actually give each other feedback uh, made uh, my life very easy as a writing instructor. I mean, I truly uh, am thankful to Hydon for recording that video and showing us how to do it. And after using uh, wikis in my class, it was uh, towards the end of the module, to be honest, uh, the participation uh, has increased and students uh, somehow found this quite personal, I guess, you know. I was using different colors, making comments, and students were able to see my comments on their friends' writing. And I highly recommend uh, wikis for all the teachers, especially if you are teaching writing. Personally, I love it, and I recommend that you watch Hayden's video if, if you haven't done so yet. Okay, so I'm moving on to the Sunda. Next yes, Jim. Sorry. Before, before we move on, uh, you can ask a question. How can we use Wiki in IS lessons? Um, mm -hmm. Wiki uh, is a page item that each student can have their own page under certain title, and you can assign anything. So the students um, can write their texts, um, they can prepare their poster presentation, or any task that you can uh, assign them. So it's not only writing specific. Yeah, one thing I was thinking of Didem is, you know, if you assign students to write maybe five sentences using a new grammar point, they could put those on the wiki and have the other students comment on them. 
or if you assign video lessons, um, you know, like have them do a video, um, they could upload that onto the wiki site. Thank you, Jen. Yes, yes. Uh, I, 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 I have uh, one more thing to say, to say about wiki. It's, it's a great, great tool. tool. Uh, so uh, because of the number of uh, students in our classes, for example, I had 38 students, and every time students uh, submitted something writing new, uh, I needed to go through the whole list that you can see here. Okay, so it's kind of difficult for the teacher to keep uh, a track of homework. So it's a good idea uh, to ask students to send you a quick message if they've done, done their homework, homework and submitted their writing. Just, just a reminder, reminder because I had uh, some problems with this while uh, tracking students' homework. Other than, than that, as I said before, it was an excellent tool and it is still is. So I'm moving on. Uh, next thing, uh, that's uh, Guy uh, Russell Stannard. You might have watched his videos uh, before and if you haven't, Please do, because the guy makes life very, very easy for online uh, teaching and the classroom situation. And one of his latest videos is on uh, Screen Customatic, which is an app uh, for uh, recording your own voice and having your screen. So the camera uh, records everything that you saw. For example, for, For example, example, you have a PowerPoint uh, presentation on your screen. You, you can use the screen and show important parts of your uh, speech and record your voice on top of that PowerPoint or any document that you want to use. And you can give students quick feedback through this uh, app. You don't have to subscribe to the website. You don't have to pay uh, anything for the for being a member of so, so I think that'll be my next step because I found uh, teacher videos and you know uh, some of our teacher videos and many people's videos the best because most of us, almost everybody, is a visual learner, and if someone teaches me how to do things through a video, then I learn. Otherwise, I find it very difficult to find uh, follow the instructions and to put everything together. So I'll have. Uh, uh, go, go and, and try, try this one, one okay? okay? And, and I'll, I'll share my feedback with you guys. guys. But, but if you want to try this for yourself, then you can visit his uh, YouTube, YouTube channel and see what is there. Okay, that's all I guess from me now. Thanks. Now we are talking about interaction. Yes. Um, so I was teaching B runners, so we didn't have long writing assignments um, and. Um, to be honest, I struggled a little bit with getting my students to do even the shorter writing assignments. Um, but one thing that um, worked towards the end when the, the day before the last day of the session, my students said, this was the best class. Um, I had them write, I had been asking them to do this for a couple of weeks, but this, this time they actually participated. But I had them write short um, sentences so on this slide, you can see we were practicing topic sentences in preparation for the gateway. Um, and I asked them to write a sentence and post it into the comments box. Um, so when a student would post a sentence, we would then spend some time um, talking about how to make it stronger. And I would then kind of edit it and type it within the comments box. Um, so that worked for me. Um, for for this class. Um, I think with these starters, I'm going to try the wikis because we'll have longer writing. Um, but kind of similar to Screencast-O-Matic, I actually use Panopto to do some um, video recording of my edits and comments and then uploaded it to my YouTube channel um, on private videos. So again, there are some different tools you can try out and get comfortable with them um, just as ways of engaging your students um, in different ways. So I think, yes. Um, do you guys have anything that you did last module or things you're excited about trying, um, ways of increasing student engagement in your classes? You can turn your mics on to share or you can type something. We'd love to hear from you.
Thank you, Gulchen. Discussion boards after each reading text. Excellent. Yeah. And thank you for your PowerPoint presentation, Christian. They, they really helped a lot. Okay, thanks, Fulia. Doing similar things. Great. Oh, excellent, Idil. Yeah. They, they can, can also use Padlet to type their sentences, sentences and they can also actually on Mentimeter, after you leave the session, uh, whatever the students have written, they're gone. But if you have, if you use Padlet, uh, they can keep it on our Blackboard course. So it could be more permanent and more reliable. Great. Thanks for your ideas, everyone. Yes, Jen. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Thanks. All right. Ah, so um, ways of working with a co-instructor. Um, so I know a lot of us have co-instructors or assisting instructors, and um, we've found different ways of working with them. Um, my partner and I found we had similar styles, and it was really helpful to kind of watch each other's lessons and learn from each other. Um, and we ended up for most of our lessons actually co-creating the materials you know one person would take one reading and one person would take another reading <laughs> yes also I'm, um, I'm gonna miss working with you uh, next module um, so this was one of the um, PowerPoint presentations that we created for reading two for the B runners um, and one thing I also did was kind of create manual I call it manual animation. So those of you who saw my comment earlier about having 60 slides in a PowerPoint presentation, um, don't get scared. <laughs> so, you know, I'd have one slide with sentences in context, a next slide where they would have to decide on the definition, and then, um, you know, the third slide would be the answer. Um, so of course I'd give them a chance to look at the context, guess at the answers, um, and yeah, this is this worked really well for my assisting teacher um, and and me. Um, I think Halden and Funda, did you want to share your ideas as well? So the logic behind the assistant instructors, you know that then one of the instructors can't get uh, connected or some internet connection problems to other teacher type solo. And I experienced this, and Ian and Chloe, he took over and conducted the lesson uh, for a while. Uh, but it doesn't mean that only, because we can help each other in different ways. For example, when I was sharing the lesson with Jill, uh, when Jill shared her entire screen, and at that moment, she couldn't see the students' responses. So at that moment, I helped her and shared what the students wrote, and we conducted the activity together. Kunda? Uh, one of the things that Jill has done for me, you know, if there were important announcements that I need, needed to make, uh, she typed everything in the chat box. So as I was explaining what the students need, needed to do, she was also making notes in the chat box. That was great. And sometimes students want to see a sample of an introduction paragraph, which I didn't have with me. For example, that was one of the incidents that happened. Jill immediately provided uh, a copy for me and we shared it uh, through the screen. So that was priceless for me. And also sometimes, uh, every now and again, and some students' mistakes that uh, come up as Jill was correcting some of the mistakes and helped me a lot when I lost the sound and the internet. I really appreciate that. And I also, like you said before, I think we should once more uh, say thank you to Gushin, making life so easy for us. She saved our life, literally, by providing all the material that she has prepared for our writing and uh, reading class. Thank you very much again. So, that was it, I I said everything. Okay, uh, just one thing. Uh, Gushin asked a question about the... Um, Padlet on Blackboard. Uh, I'll just share my screen. Okay. 
Okay, um, this is the section that I shared uh, the maturity of it my students, uh, all the sample essays called balanced opinion, blah, blah, blah. And at the end, I put Padlet. Okay, so you say to students, uh, don't need to visit the Padlet website. You can copy and paste the Padlet uh, in your Blackboard course, and whatever the students write, they can see there. Right, so, so this is also quite practical because it's user friendly and compatible with Blackboard contents. How, how can we copy this? this? How, how can, can we copy Padlet screen? Um, in, in one, one of the videos, video, I don't remember which one, but in one of the videos, I showed this. On um, the Padlet, there's a share, share link. When you share, you get the mm -hmm. HTML code and then add the, uh, put the HTML code here in the edit section. For example, when we click. Maybe we can see, yes. Okay. So here is HTML. Um, you copy the HTML code from Padlet and then you paste it there and it's all yours. Mm -hmm. And Heldon, is that Thank dynamic? You, is that dynamic? Will it change as students add things? Yes. Okay. It's, it's quite dynamic that you can see uh, immediately. I mean, let me submit this. The students can see whatever you type, even letter by letter, not word by word. Hmm. Thanks. It's that dynamic. Okay. Thank you very much for the challenge. Let's go back to our slide. Thank you, Jane. Okay, uh, we have a full activity here. You, okay. you see. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. If you don't, if you don't want to do that, okay, I understand that. Uh, here you can see uh, five different uh, people representing teachers all around the world who teach online these days. Okay, so which one, which of these speech bubbles uh, you agree the most? Can you type? Uh, in the number of the speech bubble, please. And we'll have a short discussion before we finish. Let's see. Everything takes longer. Students need to be more motivated and involved. Yes, we have number one, number five, five, yes, yes. Okay, we have two and I think you agree with most of these things. Most of the things that's said by the teachers. I think the point here uh, is that, you know, we are not alone. Uh, we are not the only teachers te having to teach online these days. And people share similar problems, similar concerns, like uh, the ones we have. And here, there is their voice, in fact. Okay. Do, Do you want, want to uh, make any comments about any of the speech bubbles? Do you have any comments about any of them? Number four, uh, most of the learning takes place on the platform or outside the live lesson. Uh, it comes up that, you know, most teachers teaching online uh, has witnessed that the things that they covered in the lesson isn't enough for students to learn if it is something completely new. By platform here, for example, our platform is Blackboard. Okay, the things that you assign on Blackboard before and after the lesson uh, go a long way for students uh, to learn better actually. So the ones for some reasons, if they can't participate in the lesson or if they don't have the internet connection that day, the things you upload uh, on Blackboard, you know, as uh, material from, from the teacher, you know, carries great importance here. And students uh, are supposed to be more 
autonomous because of the conditions you are in. And so the things you do before the lesson, ask them to do your homework and check the answers for maybe for a reading text, you know, is quite important. I think that's what they uh, meant by number four. Okay. okay, do you, you have, have any comments, comments or questions? I, I think most of you feel the share the same, same feelings as these people. people. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. Thank, Thank you very, very much. much. Before, Before we finish, finish maybe, maybe uh, uh, yes, on, on the screen right now, you can see the resources that you can uh, make use of, of and certain websites like Sandy Millen's WordPress blog and teacher training videos from lots of standards and also people uh, to read about and listen to. Uh, you can see the list on the screen right now. If you want to have the slides of this session, we can happily send you the slides. And also, I compiled um, a set of icebreakers and warmers for you and i can always email that document to you so that you can see the sources and see the activities and see which ones you like the most uh, one thing i think we should say here is the way that we suggest you should do okay it's not because i am perfect and i do all of these things in my lessons it doesn't mean that, but we are, all of us are working very hard to achieve something better. It is not that you should teach this way, but if you like the idea, you can go, go ahead and try these activities just to feel better about your teaching. These are just suggestions. These are not here to tell you how to teach. Anything else, guys, Jen and Haldun, would you like to add comments? Do you want to chip in before we finish? Um, yes. Um, as you can said, we can put the icebreakers on the blackboard, and you also recorded the session. Uh, we can also we can also give you the link that you can um, have a look if you want later. Mm -hmm. And that's it, friends. Um, you're all, as Jen said, as in commercials, we're on the same boat <laughs> and trying to do our best as much as we can. So. Thank you all. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed it, guys. Thank you very much for coming, being with us. Thank you for this community. Yeah, I just wanted to say, you know, the, the importance of building community in this challenging time. Um, you know, we're trying to do that with our students, and I'm so grateful for this community of teachers and colleagues. So thank you very much. We are so lucky to have you. We are so lucky to be working with you. Thank you very much. We need you a lot. So did I. Yes. So, guys, we'll be sending you the presentation and the document contents. Yes, the link uh, to the documents and everything. Hi, Jonja. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jen, you can stay for a while. Yep, let me turn off pen up. Uh, I'll turn off pen up though, and then we can. Okay. okay.